going? How y'all doing? Oh hi! Oh hi! Hi! Yeah, our piano player's coming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How is everybody this morning? Good. If you would, stand with us and turn to hymnal 467. Then after that, we'll be turning to hymnal number 10. Crossed on the other side of the book. Verses, yeah, all three. One, two, and three. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. join me still i will follow though no one join me still i will follow though no one join me still i will follow no turning back no turning back the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Amen. You may be seated. It says, welcome in prayer. Isn't there a course of the week? Oh, I guess so. Wow. Hey. I'm okay. <laughs> Do you know what? Today's Sunday. Amen? I got her I got her all together. Amen? <laughs> Hopefully. All right. It's good to have everybody here this morning. I'll tell you what. It, uh, uh, it's been one of those weeks. You know, I um, tonight we've got a, uh, a business meeting. I called Nancy last night, and I said, um, um, you know what we forgot? And she goes, what? I said, um, to get everything ready for tomorrow night. She goes, well, what's tomorrow night? I said, well, we've got our second quarter business meeting. <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> well, we've had a, kind of a busy week with the first week of school, and we both forgot. And so I worked late I last night. Him. So we got it all together now. But uh, anyway, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you for this Lord's Day. We thank you so much for loving us. We're just praying now that you'll guide and direct this service, that everything that's done will be for your honor and your glory. We pray for Brother and Mrs. Echoes as they're heading for... Um, the reservation, Lord, we just pray that you give them safety as they travel and be with Brother Echoes as he preaches up there today. I just pray that they might see souls saved. And Father, we thank you for uh, this church. I just pray for the services. Pray that you're you'll be honored and glorified in everything that's said and done. Be with us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I'm back. <laughs> I can sing backwards. If you all will turn in your hymnals to 341, as soon as I get there. Let's see. Savior came from glory, how he 
gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his hidden revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see and then i cried dear jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow jesus came and brought to me the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and no my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory and i heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood amen it sounds good out there you just gotta get taller i do i can't see you when i'm playing piano you just gotta grow now i can see you now though i can see you finally <laughs> That's what happens when you're short. Amen. Where is he? All right. We've got a lot of stuff coming up. We got Noisy Bucket today. And um, so we're going to need a couple uh, youngsters, youngsters up here to uh, um, take Noisy Bucket today. We've got uh, Noisy Bucket today. We've got uh, um, a lot of things happening. We've got tonight, we've got our second quarter business meeting. Um, so at 5 o'clock. Uh, so if you're a member of the church, please be here tonight. We've got a lot to discuss. Also coming up on August the 7th, we've got question and answer on Wednesday night. Uh, August the um, uh, 9th is Teens Under God's Guidance. Uh, August 13th is um, a parent meeting at 6 o'clock. Uh, this parent meeting for school uh, is going to, um, we're going to call this for, um, the reason it's, it's being called is to get parents involved in our junior regional coming up. Uh, we've got a lot of things that need to be done. We've got um, uh, a lot of areas that need to be filled as far as judging and uh, uh, food and, and things like that. So uh, make sure you mark your calendar for August the 13th for a uh, parents meeting. Also coming up on the 17th uh, is Men and Ladies Fellowship. Uh, August the uh, 18th is Friends Sunday. Now, I have up here in the Lord's Supper table, I've got uh, invites. And what this says is, will you be my friend for a day? And it, uh, uh, August 18th, 2000, oh, wrong date on it, 2014, I hit the wrong key. You know, it's hard, to, it's hard to type when you're crippled, you know what I mean? Anyway, just change it to 2019 instead of 2014. August 18th, 2019. Uh, come to church with me to Florence Baptist Church. Uh, there'll be fun and prizes. And I want you to take these and pass them out to your friends and see if you can get them invited to come, uh, not only for church, but also for Sunday school. We've got a full day planned. 
We're going to have um, uh, Sunday school at 9 o'clock. We're going to have um, um, morning worship at 10. Then after the service, we're going to have a cookout. We're going to have uh, a potluck. Uh, we're going to uh, have dinner on the grounds. And then at 1 o'clock, uh, we're going to have our evening service. And uh, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to, um, instead of having the 5 o'clock, we'll have it at, at 1 o'clock. And um, then we don't have to be out when it's real hot. Amen? And uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, just plan on being here for Friend Sunday on August 18th. August 23rd is Tug Again. And then uh, August the uh, uh, 25th is Noisy Bucket. I also have another announcement to make. I'm going to be making it tonight at the um, uh, business meeting. Uh, and it's going to be starting on August the 6th. Um, well, I'll give you a little insight, okay? We're starting an adult high school. Uh, what that means is that if you uh, have never graduated from high school, if you're looking at possibly going after a um, high school diploma, if you have a GED or, or whatever, or you don't have anything at all, uh, we're opening it up to adults. We're going to be starting it um, on uh, August the 6th. It'll be two nights a week. It'll be Tuesday and Thursday night, but you have to make a commitment. You have to be there because um, uh, it's going to be just like going to high school. You're going to have a lot of homework, a lot of homework. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's that? Yeah. And uh, so anyway, but um, so if, if are we live streaming yet? Okay. So if you are in the Florence area and you're watching live stream, um, if you would like to get involved in the uh, high school, um, uh, just either get a hold of um, uh, the, sco uh, the school, uh, call the church number, and uh, we'll give you more information on it. And um, I'm looking forward to it because there's an awful lot of people who would like to get a high school diploma, but they just never finish school. You know? What? about women's fellowship and choir. Yeah. Did 17. you announce choir? Do we need for choir next week? To start choir? Yeah. Well, um, the choir, we're going to start probably the 15th of, of August. No, Mrs. Archos and I talked about having a meeting next week to see how many... Okay, when? Sunday. Right next after Sunday? church. Right after church. Today? No, next Sunday. Okay. Right after church. She's not going to be here. I know. Oh, you're going to have the meeting? Yes. Okay. She's All right. Like, yeah. If you're interested in being in the choir, we're going to start a choir. In fact, I am in the process right now of writing a Christmas cantata. I've, I started it this week, and uh, hopefully I'll have it done within the next two or three weeks. Uh, and if you're interested in being in the uh, church choir, uh, next Sunday, there's going to be a meeting right after church uh, up in the front. So, uh, and high uh, school students are, are high school yep. age people are more than welcome. We'd love yep. that. High school and up. So uh, if you're interested at all in singing in the choir, uh, please come because it's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, also coming up on, um, um, let's see, September the 4th to be question and answer. Uh, September 7th, we'll be starting uh, Trap and Skeet. Um, uh, practice again for the um, high school kids um, and junior high. Uh, September 13th is Tug. September 14th is uh, um, Men and Women's Fellowship. 21st is Trap and Skeet. And then um, uh, September 26th and 27th will be Christian Educators Conference. And then um, uh, we'll be back to Noisy Bucket on the 29th. So we've got a lot of things coming up. Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, yep. So we'll make an announcement on that next week. So, all right, well, it's good to have everybody here today. We're going to sing our course of the month, and then I'm going to see if we can get a couple little kiddos up here to do a um, uh, noisy bucket, all right? Okay. Stand, please. He is Lord, He is Lord, 
He has risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Shake everybody's hand. Thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Fill them buckets up.
if you turn one more time, hymn 413, uh, it's Love Lifted Me. Please stand. Turn to page 413. Oh, she's got the clutch and the gas pedal. If you just take off, I'll fill in. <laughs> Sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Lifted me, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, all my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling. In His blessed presence, live ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits their souls belong. So faithful, loving service to to Him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, sounds in danger, look above, Jesus my prisoner saved. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. A couple birthdays today. We got one for Roger and one for Mike. Uh, both of them um, turned another year older and deeper in death. And uh, so let's sing happy birthday to them, shall we? You don't have happy birthday, do you? No, I don't. Okay, let's just sing an acapella. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, only one will not do, born again means salvation, how many have you, amen. All right, all of the kiddos, no, no. special, huh? oh you got a special, we've been, okay. we've been trying to get that, <laughs> well just wait, hang on, hang on, we're not going to junior church yet, okay, okay, all right, that's good. Hopefully. Oh, dear Jesus, help me do this.
Everybody gets to go with Mrs. Storm to Junior Church, huh? Yeah. I'm going to go too. What? They may come home smelling like peanut butter. No, I'm just kidding. Now, if I was in junior church, believe me, they would be peanut butter. All right, turn your Bibles, will, to the book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter number 9. The title of this morning's message is, There is a Man. There is a Man. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9. We're looking at two verses. Verses 14 and 15. Starting at verse 14, it says, There was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great billocks against it. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered that same poor man. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for your love. I just pray now that you'll guide and direct in this message. Pray that we might get something out of it. I just pray that I can be a help to the people this morning. And I just pray now that you'll guide and direct in everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> you know, in the society we live today, there's a need for men. There's a need for men to step up to the plate and be preachers. I, um, this is one of the things that has really bothered me the last few years is that we're seeing more and more independent Baptist churches that are closing their doors because there's no men to come in and take the place of the pastors who are either dying or retiring and, and preaching no more. I know, of a church, I know of four churches right now in Arizona who are without pastors. They've been without pastors for two, three, four years because there's just not anyone to fill the pulpits. You know... I want to show you today what it takes to be a man to take over a church or to do what God has called them to do. You know, I believe that there are, are certain credentials that a person needs to fulfill in order to be this man. And if you listen closely, and I'm not only preaching to men, I want you ladies to hear it too, because this is for all of us. And I believe that there are certain credentials that God has put forward that we need to have in order to be a person who can fulfill what God has for us. The first person I want to look at, I'm going to look at two people today. First one is a guy by the name of Noah, and everybody knows who Noah is. In Genesis chapter 6, verses 8 and 9, it says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. You know, look at Noah's credentials for just a minute. Look, look what Noah was all about. You know, he was a just man. The word just here means upright, honest, having uh, principles in his life. You know, as we were called at the time of Noah, there was no law. There was no law back then. You know, the Mosaic law didn't come until who? Moses. So here we see we got Noah. He was lawless. There was no law. In fact, you know that there was not even a death penalty back in the days of Noah? At this time, death was legal. If you killed someone, it was fine. You know, look at, look at Cain and Abel. You know, God didn't punish Cain for killing Abel, did he? I mean, he didn't take his life. And um, we need to realize that, that here we see that, that he was also perfect in his generation. 
The word perfect here means complete. Here we see that Noah was complete in his life. He had completeness in how he performed his day-to-day -day dealing. You know, he ruled his family and did not rely on his wife to make the decision. He was satisfied with what he had. Now think about this for a minute. What time period did he live in? What was going on at that time period? The Bible says what? Men sinned and did whatever they wanted to. You know, they said, the Bible says that the sins of man was above imagination. I have a pretty good imagination, but I don't think I can imagine what was going on in the days of Noah. But yet, Noah was living in that, and yet he didn't follow it. You know, he ruled his family very, very well. You know, he walked with God. Noah did everything, not for himself, but for God. He listened for God to tell him what he should do. You know, if there would have been a church in that day, I believe that Noah would have been there every Sunday morning. I believe he would have been there every Sunday night. I believe he would have been there every Wednesday night. I believe that Noah would have been there whenever he possibly could have been. But there was no churches back then. But yet, he worshipped the true God. Was there a law that he had to worship God? No, there was no laws. But yet he still worshipped the true God. You know, if, if there would have been a Bible, I believe that he probably would have read it every day. I believe that Noah would have got up every morning and had his devotions and read the Bible. And you know what? I believe that he prayed often, though. He knew who God was, and I believe that he prayed often to God. You know, if we had men today with these type of credentials, men who are just, honest in all their dealings, not trying to get rich quick, so to speak, men whose principles were based on the word of God, men who will have convictions that they'll stand on. You know, today in our society, we have an awful lot of men who, is, they say, oh, I've got convictions. I don't do this. I don't do that. But you know what? Their convictions don't last very long. They go with every wind of doctrine, so to speak. Just like the waves will toss a boat about. You know, men who have convictions and will stand on what they, what they believe. You know, men who are willing to stand alone if necessary. You know, there's an awful lot of people today, they're like this. And I guess I'm like it too. Is... Well, you know what? Everybody else is doing it. I'm going to do it too. You know, I'm going to go along with the crowd. You know, if everybody jumps off the Empire State, I'm going to go along with that. Amen? I mean, listen, we need men who will stand alone if necessary. You know, it's amazing of how when my wife and I go out to eat and things like that, we'll pray. You know, yesterday we were over at uh, uh, Country um, yeah, Golden Corral. I knew it was one of them Western restaurants, you know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, anyway, we were over there and, and, um, with the Holcombs, and, and, we, and we prayed. And you know, I stood up to pray, and it was amazing of how many people that were sitting around with us quit eating and bowed their head. Now, did they pray before they ate? Probably not. But because I was praying, they prayed. You know, listen, we need people who will stand alone if necessary. We need men that will take and say, you know what? I'm going to pray no matter what. I'm going to take and do what's right. I'm going to rule my family the way they should be ruled. This morning in Sunday school, we uh, learned what it was like to be a teenager during the times of Moses. I'll tell you what, it, it was interesting. It really was. You know, that if you were a teenager in the time of Moses, and you hit your parents, 
you were stoned to death. You were stoned to death. You were taken out and stoned to death. Do you know that if you cursed your parents or you talked back to them, you were stoned to death? You know what? If that happened today, we would either have a lot less teenagers or we'd have an awful lot of teenagers that looked at their parents as who they should be. Listen, we need men, though, that will take and stand up for what they believe. Not only that, but we need men who are perfect in their generation. You know, men who have a testimony, which when people look at that and they say, you know what, he is a Christian. I want to live my life like him. It used to be a few years ago, I always wore a shirt and tie. Always, until the doctor told me when it, the temperature gets a certain temperature, you don't wear a tie anymore because it cuts off the blood throw, flow to your brain and you can't think as well. Maybe that's why I'm the way I am. Anyway, but I used to wear a tie and in my shirt pocket, I had three things. I had a pen, I had a track, and I had a three by five card in there. The three by five card was write down any notes or anything. If I w ran into somebody that, that I thought, you know, wanted to come to church, I'd put it down. Or if somebody said, well, we need to ride to church, I'd write down the address and stuff. And I always had a three by five card in my, in my pocket. One day I came to church, and here's a little guy about this big. He was in our school. And he come walking in, and he had a brand new white shirt on, tie, and in his pocket he had a pen a track, and a three-by-five card. I looked at him and said, man, you look great today. He says, I'm going to be just like you. You know, listen, we need men like that. We need men that our younger generation look at you and say, you know what, I want to be like that. I want to live my life like he lives his. You know, we need men to stand up and... Uh, and be counted. You know, men who do not wear a Christian mask on Sunday and then take it off on Monday and live like the world the rest of the week. We need men who will rule their families and teach their children the right way to do things. Men who are not hypocrites living their lives one way on Sunday and another way every other time. We need men who will walk with God. We need men who will walk with God. You know, men who will read their Bibles and study to show themselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. They need to do that on a daily basis. Read your Bible every day. We need men who will pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. Hey, listen, you know, it's amazing how people come to me and say, well, you pray for, well, pray for me or pray for somebody in my family. Do you pray for them? Well, no, but you got a direct line with God. You know, I'm going, internet? Oh, I got Wi-Fi. That's right, I got Wi-Fi with God. I forgot about that. You know, I can take and I can talk to God anytime because of Wi-Fi, amen? Well, listen, so do you, so do you. Men who are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Men who will not be afraid to be in church, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and, to, and, um, and so much more as the day is approaching. Listen, we need men who are going to stand in the gap. We need men who are going to stand up and say, you know what? I'm going to fill that gap. You know, do you know what that meant? Do you, I got a verse I want to read. And, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Listen, what it means to stand in the gap is years ago, when they were fighting wars, all of a sudden there might be a hole 
in the wall around the city. Someone would go into that hole in that wall with their spear and their sword, and they would stand in the gap so the enemy didn't come through. Listen, we need men that will fill that gap. You know, <clears throat> Noah was a man used because of his righteous life. You know, I believe that we have men here in Florence Baptist Church and ladies in this church who have the same credentials. I believe that fully, that there's people in this church that have the same credentials as what Noah did. I believe that. Another man I want to look at is a guy by the name of Bezeel. In Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 to 5, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezeel, the son of Yoai, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and the knowledge and all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work with gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones, to set them and in carving of lumber, to work in all manner of workmanship. You know, I want to look at this guy for just a minute. And the reason I want to look at him is how many of you ever heard of him before? You know, many times we take and we read people in the Bible and we just kind of, okay, yeah, all right, you know. And we think, okay, what, what, what is he there for? You know, I don't believe that Bezeal was a man of greatness. I really don't. He was not a man like Moses. He was not a man like Joshua. He was not a man like her. He was not a man that anyone would walk up to and say, man, you are great. You know what I mean? He wasn't that type. I believe that he was just a common man in the tribe of Judah. I believe that he had no greatness. I don't believe that he was rich. I don't think he was famous. I don't think he had any real talent that was better than anybody else. I just believe that he was just a common, everyday man. But you know, there's some things that I see in this passage of Scripture that are so very important for each of us to understand. And I want to look at them for just a couple minutes here real quick. <clears throat> the first thing is this. Is that I have called by name. Listen. God knows our name. Did you know that? God knows who we are. God knows where we go. God knows what we do. He knows everything about us. Look at, look at what he said. He says, I called him by name. Wow. Here's just a common man, and God is calling him by name. You know, when God wants us, he's going to call us by name. Did you know that? I can see it now. Jacob! You know, I can, I can see God doing it. You know, um, you know, if you read the book of Ezekiel, you'll see over and over and over and over again that the word of the Lord comes to Ezekiel. The word of the Lord comes to Ezekiel. It wasn't anybody else. It was to Ezekiel and Ezekiel alone. You know, why is it that we reject the calling of God? Why is it that we just don't let go and let God have control of our lives, our families, our finances? You know, if, if we would just let go... And let God have control when he calls us. I believe that we would live a whole lot better life. Amen? You know, I can remember when God called me into the ministry. I surrendered to preach when I was 10 years old. 10 years old. I'll never forget. I was at camp. 
One night at a campfire, I took a stick and I threw it in the fire and I said, Lord, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll say whatever you want me to say. You want me to be a preacher, I'll be a preacher. If you want me to be a missionary, I'll be a missionary. God called me when I was 40 years old. 30 years. 30 years later, after I said I would do what I, whatever you want me to do, God called me. As I laid flat on my back, looking up at the sky, seeing the clouds move across, thinking I was going to go to heaven, God called me to be a preacher. You know, here we see that God not only called him, but it says, I have filled him. What did he fill him with? What did he fill Bazeal with? What did he fill him with? He filled him with his spirit. He filled him with his whole, he filled him with the Holy Spirit. After all, not everybody in Old Testament times were filled with the Holy Spirit, were they? Moses was. Then the Spirit went off of Moses onto Joshua. But here, here we see that he was filled with the Spirit. When do we get filled with the Spirit? The minute we get saved. The very moment that we ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. How much Holy Spirit do we get? Nope, we get all of it. You know, I've been drinking this, but if you can imagine this bottle filled up to the top, that's how much Holy Spirit we get. All of him. Every bit of it. And then once we're filled, what happens? We're sealed. Nothing can take him away. How long are we sealed? Till the day of redemption. You know, what we need to realize is that <clears throat> here we see that God filled him. What did he fill him with? He had wisdom. He knew what had to be done and why it was going to be done a certain way. God had given him wisdom to do the job that he is called to do. Not only that, but he'd also given him understanding to do the things that God wanted him to do. What was he going to do? He was the one that was going to build the tabernacle. Think about this. Where are the children of Israel right now? Out in the wilderness. What do they have in the wilderness for building material? Now, the Bible says that he gave him wisdom in using gold, silver, precious stones, and wood. Now, think about this for a minute. God had a specific plan for the priests. And this plan was this. He says... I want their garments to look like this. I want them to have this on it. I want them to be sewed with pure gold thread. Now, let me ask you something. Where did they get pure gold thread from in the wilderness? Oh, wait a minute. They didn't go to Walmart. Oh, they didn't go to Target, right? Huh? No. Hey, think about this for a minute. Can you imagine taking a piece of gold... And taking a hammer and beating it to a point to where you can sew with it. Think of a thread. Just a thread. And yet God gave him the ability to know exactly how to beat that gold down to where a woman could sew with pure gold thread. Man, I'll tell you what. That would take an awful lot of wisdom and understanding, wouldn't it? I mean, I, I couldn't do it. You know, I tried to do it one time with a little piece of silver. I thought, you know what, I can do this. So you know what, I took it a hammer and I'm going, boom, 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 boom. And you know what, I had it down pretty good. I really did. I kept rolling it, rolling it, getting it a little warmer and warmer. And, but you know what, it broke. It broke. And it was never thin enough. To sew with. I could never get it thin enough to go in the head of a needle, ever. But yet he did. He did. He had the understanding. God had put in his heart how to do all this stuff. 
You know, I find that so interesting. You know, he understood the things that God had told him to do. You know, with the knowledge that he had now, he could do everything that God wanted him to do with the tabernacle. You know, all manner of workmanship. You know, God did not call him to be a preacher. Did you notice that? God did not call Bezeel to be a preacher. He did not call Bezeel to be a evangelist. He did not call him to be a missionary, did he? He called him for a specific task, and that specific task was to build the tabernacle. And he gave him all the wisdom and all the knowledge that he needed to do that task. You know, it's amazing of what God will do if we heed his call. You know, if we would only understand these simple principles, that God will call us by name, we need to be ready to answer that call God is going to fill us with everything that we need to know to do the task that he's called us to do. You need to understand that. You say, well, I, you know what? I can't teach a Sunday school class. Why not? I can't work in the school. Why not? I can't work in the food bank. Why not? I can't work in a junior church. Why not? I can't work in a kid's ministry, why not? Listen, if God calls you to do something, don't worry about doing it because he's going to fill you with the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of how to do that job. Cherish, I'm picking on you today. The reason I'm picking on her is because she stepped up to the plate this year in a big way. We're going to have junior convention. Uh, two weeks ago, I was called by Maranatha uh, Christian Center down in, uh, in uh, Tucson. They said they couldn't have it down there this year because of some problems that they're having. And I said, okay, fine. So I'm sitting there. I'm wondering how we can do it. I mean, this thing is a big task, huge task. You have to get people around to take and be judges. You have to have early entries in. You have to have registration. And you have to have all this stuff done. Well, Cherish, she says, you know what? I believe God wants me to do that. And you know what? He's given her the wisdom and understanding how to do it. I'll tell you what. Listen, if you will only say, you know what, God? You've called me to do this, and I know that you'll give me the wisdom and understanding to get it done. It's going to go through. Guarantee it. You know, when I became a pastor, I did not want to be a pastor. I didn't. I had so many excuses why I couldn't preach. It was unbelievable. I could have wrote a book. And yet God gave me the wisdom and understanding I needed to have in order to be the pastor of Florence Baptist Church for the last 20 years. You know, what we need to realize is this. If we will let God have control of our lives. He will help us get through a lot of things. You know, I could have went through the Bible today and went through a lot of different men. I mean, there's all kinds of men and ladies in the Bible that, believe it or not, have these same characteristics and credentials, but we don't have time. You know, I fully believe that there are men and women of Florence Baptist Church that need to be just in all they do. They need to be perfect in their generation. And they need to walk with God. Not only that, but I believe that God will do this if you do that. He will call you by name. 
Not only will he call you by name, but he'll empower you to do the job that he's putting in front of you. And not only that, but you're going to receive honor and glory that you can never, ever, ever imagine. You know, are you the man or lady today who will stand in the gap and give the glory to God for what he will do in your life? You know, we need to realize that God will call us into service. But the first thing we have to do is what? We have to know who he is, don't we? Before he will call us into service, we have to know exactly who the Lord is. You know, we need to realize that what we're all what? Sinners, aren't we? You know, we're all sinners. The Bible says, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God. We need to understand that there's a what? Penalty for our sin. You know, I was talking to the kids this last Wednesday at, at chapel, and I said, you know, I said, when it talks about the penalty there, it's just like if you do something wrong. I asked them, I said, if you go to Circle K and you steal something, you get caught, what's going to happen to you? We'll go to detention. I said, yeah, you're right. That's your penalty for what you did. Well, listen, there's a penalty for our sin, too. God cannot have sin in heaven. So if we've sinned, guess what? We aren't going to heaven. But the rest of that verse says, but the gift of God is eternal life. You know, God has a gift for each and every one of us, and that is salvation. All we need to do is ask for it. After all, he says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not might be saved, but shall be saved. You know, we need to take and realize before he can use us in his service, we need to know him. Once that happens, he can use us. You know, I believe that there is a man in this church right now who God is going to call one day very soon to take over this ministry. I believe that. I believe there's someone in this church right now that God is going to call by name and say, I want you to be taught how to be the preacher of this church. After all, I'm not getting any younger. Amen? I'm not getting any younger. Someday, somebody's going to have to take over the church. Is it going to be you? You know, I believe that God has a plan for each of us. There's not a person in this building right now or watching on the internet that God does not have a purpose for. I don't know what that purpose is, but he does. You have to be willing to listen to what he wants you to do. You know, there's an awful lot, I believe there's an awful lot of people that should be on the mission field today that aren't because they didn't listen to God. I believe there's an awful lot of church doors that are going shut because people didn't listen to the calling of God to become a preacher. I believe there's a lot of Sunday school classes that are empty because there's no Sunday school teacher. Listen, you need to listen to the voice of God. Because he's going to call you by name, just like he did Bazeal. You know, I cannot believe that Bazeal thought for one minute that God was going to call him by name. I can't, I can't believe that. You think God came down and says, Okay, Bazeal, this is what I want you. I don't believe that. I believe he went to Moses. He said, Now I called this Bazeal by name. Out of all the people in Judah, I called him by name. I've empowered him. I've given him the understanding. I've given him the wisdom. Now you go get him busy. Amen? And I believe that's the way it is in the church. You know, we've got a lot of good people in this church. We really do. 
love every one of you. We got a lot of hard workers. There's been a lot of work done in this church in the last year, or actually the last three years. And we still got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Don't we, William? <laughs> but we need people to help. There is a man. Are you that man? Are you that man today? Are you the one that God is going to call by name? Who he will fill you with his wisdom and his understanding to do the job that he's called you to do? Are you willing to listen for your name to be called? And if your name's called, are you willing to answer that call? Boy, I sure hope so. If you're here today and you're not even 100% sure that you're saved, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. You need to find him today. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Father, there is a man. We know that there's a man that you have sitting back right now just waiting for you to call him by name. And once you call him by name, you'll fill them with understanding and wisdom. But Father, until they're called, they need to realize that they need to have the credentials of Noah. They need to be just, they need to be upright, and they need to love you in all ways. Father, I just thank you so much for loving us, Thank you for this time now. With every head bowed and every eye closed for just a minute, maybe you're here today and you're saying, you know, preacher, <clears throat> I want to be like Noah and Bazile. I want to have the credentials of them too. And I'm willing to listen for my name to be called by God to do what he has for me. Would you pray for me today? Is there anyone like that? Quickly, quietly, raise your hand. Yes, hands all over the auditorium. Yes, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, you know, Pastor, I'm not even 100% sure that I'm saved. I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Would you pray for me today? Is there anyone like that? Quickly, quietly, just raise your hand, put it down. Anyone at all? I see that hand. Anyone else? I'm not sure that I'm saved. Anyone else? Would you pray for me, preacher? Anyone else? Father, you've seen the hands, you know the hearts. I just pray for these that have raised their hand, Lord, and been honest that, that they want to be called by name. They want to have the same credentials as what Noah does and Bazile does. Father, help them, I pray, that they listen intently the still small voice that may come from you. And I just pray that you would empower them with the understanding and wisdom that they need to do the job that you're calling them to do. I pray for these that raise their hand that they're not 100% sure that they're saved. I pray, Lord, that we can take and get that taken care of this morning. Father, there's no greater joy than to know for sure that if we were to be absent from the body, we'd be present with you. Father, I just pray now that you'll guide and direct in this invitation. We love you so much. We thank you for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. I'd like to everybody stand for a minute with your head bowed and your eyes closed. I'm just going to sing the first verse. Um, there's room at the cross. If you need to come to the altar today and pray and ask God to call you by name, won't you come this morning? The cross upon which Jesus died is the shelter in which we can hide. And the grace so free is sufficient for me, as deep as a fountain, as wide as the sea. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. 
Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Why don't you take your hymnal, turn to 164. If you're not 100% sure that you're saved, I'd like to have you come. I want to show you from God's word how you can know for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you're on your way to heaven. Won't you come, please? Verse number two. Though millions have found him a friend, and have turned from their have sinned, the Savior still waits to open the gate and welcome a sinner before it's too late. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. The hand of my Savior is strong, and the love of my Savior is long. Through sunshine or rain, through loss or in gain, the blood flows from Calvary to cleanse every stain. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Father, I want to thank you so much for today. We thank you for the decisions. We just pray now, Lord, that you'll guide and direct as we go our various ways. I just pray that you'll bring us back to our appointed place again tonight. Father, we just thank you so much for loving us. I know that there is a man, and I just pray, Father, that you'll speak to them, show them what they need to do, and we'll give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You are dismissed.